Oh, that's kind of cute. But these little things are kind of freaky, so bye bye. Now, I was very, very excited for this one. I have to be honest. I really was. And I've got to be even more honest and say that I haven't even finished the whole game yet, but my issues and my good points come from what I have played, and I think they carry on with just the game design itself and through the entire game experience. So, let's take a look at budget cuts, but first I do have to apologise for not playing through the whole game. One, it's been incredibly hard in the UK, I can only play VR in very small increments, and two, my PC arrived, and for everyone watching this, I want to say thank you for watching this, because Due to that support and you guys watching my videos, I've been able to buy myself a PC to make content with, so thank you so much. Anyway, there's my excuses over with, I've been playing a lot of other stuff, and it's just been too hot for VR. However, I have played around with budget cuts for about 4 or 5 hours, not necessarily advancing the story the whole time, but testing out different mechanics and how the game feels and works, and there are a couple of things I want to point out about the game's design that might put you off a little bit, but overall here, there's a great game in there. There really is, and it's not that hard to see it, and it's not that hard to have fun. And that is not really a hot take about budget cuts. It's a good stealth puzzler game with a cool setting, some good humor, some decent throwing knife combat, and a story that's just good enough with some really neat VR mechanics. However, unfortunately the visuals aren't exactly what I'd call next gen. The headset seems like it's running at 90, maybe. No, maybe not. Maybe 60, but this feels like it's running at like 30, which is odd when I'm picking it up. When I drop it, that seems like 60 or 90. So let's start there. The visuals, right? The gameplay you're seeing on screen right now isn't quite accurate to what you see in the headset. It looks a little worse than this, and what I mean by that is that it's a little bit fuzzier. Things look pixelated, there's a lot of aliasing going on around objects that are in, you know, mid-distance or far distance. And if I'm going to compare it to a game that's been played a lot on PSVR 2, I would say Switchback. However, I didn't really see it as big of an issue in Switchback because it uses dark areas a lot to hide this sort of aliasing and perhaps the lower visual quality compared to some other games like Horizon Call of the Mountain or Kayak VR. And overall, I didn't really notice it too much there. But here in budget cuts, everything's bright, everything's angular, and when they have these jagged edges making up what's supposed to be straight lines, it is very noticeable. And I really hate to kind of say it, but it's gonna put a lot of people off buying this title. However, if you can get past the slightly blurry visuals, the game is a lot of fun. And if you've never played this game or seen it much before, I'm gonna do my best to endorse how actually fun the gameplay loop is. However, if you play budget cuts on another platform, I would say maybe skip this one on PSVR 2 because it's not gonna look any better. It's the kind of sad truth about it. Anyway, onto the gameplay itself. In Budget Cuts, you make your way through office buildings, stealthing around robots that have taken over the workspace as the last remaining human that you are, using a teleport gun to look around corners and make sure places are safe, along with free locomotion and your nice hand controllers to pick up objects, smash your way through robots, stab them, and get to the puzzles that you need to solve to exit the levels. Let's start off with one of the most impressive parts, and that is the movement. Sure, you've got free locomotion, but what is one of the coolest parts of this game is the teleport gun. This is your way of quickly moving about levels while giving yourself a stealth advantage, because essentially how it works is you fire the gun into a space and it gives you a gap to look through, to look around and check if the coast is clear. This moves around with your hand wherever you point it, meaning you can get a full 360 degree view of the area you're about to jump into before you jump into it. And of course, you can cancel that movement if you think the area is too hot with resistance, or go ahead with it if you think the coast is all clear. Oh, that's neat. Okay. So I can shoot that and then see where I am in this space. However, I didn't find myself actually using this too much unless it was mandatory to get through small gaps in walls, for example. Overall, I used the normal locomotion the most, and it works perfectly fine. Occasionally, you get stuck on doors when they aren't fully opened, but apart from that, it works like any other standard VR game on PSVR 2 with smooth locomotion. Now, stealth is a bit of another story. This is private property. I'm sorry. Move! Uh... Patrol drone, die. 
It's coupled with some great sound design when you're caught with a really high-pitched noise from the robots and occasional voice lines that are actually pretty well written. But ultimately the stealth is a little basic. Enemies will look at you, lock onto you, shoot you, chase you down, try and hit you if you disarm them. But a lot of the time you can get out their sight lines after they've spotted you and they kind of just forget that you're there. I've had it a couple times where robots have chased after me and hunted me down and there are spaces around the map to accommodate for you hiding but most of the time you don't really have to. The game gives you just enough resources to collateral your way through a level if you want to kill all the enemy robots in your sight. Shit, shit, shit. They're not open. Shit. Sorry bro. But it's not advised. Stealth is mostly advised here, but I'm not a very stealthy person. So it's nice to see that option was accommodated at least. Your main weapons are throwing knives, scissors, and your best friend, ceramic cups and plates. Ah, ah, ah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I didn't mean to, I didn't mean that. Just go to sleep. Okay, cups are my best friend at the moment. These can be used to knock out enemies and you can cleverly move them in different places to hide their bodies to avoid them being caught. I really like this feature. Everything has physics in this game. Everything feels tangible. And I think that's one of the reasons that I do recommend giving it a chance, maybe on sale, or if you don't mind the visuals being a little bit lacking. Because knocking someone out and dragging their body into a cupboard just so that nobody sees them, it's a cool feeling. And the developers nailed that here. Hi. Fuck. Ah, uh, shit. Can I move you after you're dead? Oh, I can. Shit. That frantic feeling of trying to drag an unconscious robot away from the others before they're found. Just go. Just, 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 just leave. Just there. There you go. Bye bye. Unfortunately, the levels that you do this in are a little bit bland looking. I did get lost a couple times trying to find my way around them because all the rooms are just white. They look the same and it's probably a product of their time back when the game was released. And I'm pretty sure the second half of Budget Cuts Ultimate, because this includes both games, does address this a bit. I'll put some footage on screen now to show off the latter part of the game. It looks a lot more colorful. The environments are more unique and I'm sure they look great. But for your first few hours in the game, traversing through the first game, it's gonna be pretty bland and quite hard to navigate around unless you're paying very, very close attention. Also, this game is pretty much a puzzler or a light puzzler. There are a lot of puzzles to do among the stealth. It's not a shooter, it's not heavily action focused apart from the throwing knives. So if puzzles aren't your thing, maybe steer clear of it. I don't know what this is. I got a crab and I brought it with me. I don't think I need it. But I mean, I have it, so. Anyway, that sounded like a lot of berating towards the game itself, but I had a lot of fun with it. I would be lying if I said I didn't, and I'm a very easy consumer to please. If you put something in front of me that is even remotely fun, I will have a good time with it. And even though there are visual issues with budget cuts, with some level design, at least in the first half of the game, I just really enjoyed it. I'm not gonna lie. So if you enjoy anything that you see here and you don't mind muddier visuals, Give it a go if you haven't tried budget cuts before, maybe on sale if you're a little wary, but if you've played the game before, as I said, there's probably not a reason to revisit it here because it's not gonna look any better than it did on your previous outing. Anyway, thank you all for watching. I hope you did enjoy. If you did, feel free to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Wave it, yeah. <laughs> oh, I love that. There's a dude over there. Hi friend. Uh...